Hello, this is Martin from ML Modules, and in this video I want to talk a little bit more about the memory sequencer. The memory sequencer shares many features with the analog sequencer. In particular, it's also composed of several sections. On the left hand side, there is the transport section, which is nearly identical to that of the analog sequencer. In the middle, there is the section controlling the voltages and the gates. And on the right hand side, there is an additional section about the memory where several sequences can be stored and recalled. However, there are also clear differences to the analog sequencer. The most obvious one is that there are no knobs to control the voltages for each step. So, how does the memory sequencer actually work? It's actually more a combination of sequential switches than it is a sequencer as such. So if we start looking at the first row, the first row is actually a sequential switch in which the input signal will be stored sequentially in the various steps. In a way it behaves like a 1 to 16 sequential switch. We will come back later to the ways we can store the voltages in the various steps. The other two rows are more like normal sequencers. They cycle through the stored voltages and deliver that voltage at the output port. So in a way they are very sim similar to the rows of the analog sequencer, only that the voltage is not controlled by a knob for each step, but the voltages are read from the values stored in the top row of the sequencer. Finally, the memory section consists of eight memory banks which can store the 16 voltages of the first row and they can be written, they can be read back into the first row and with the pull jacks we can read just the active value of the stored sequence back into the first row. I will show later how that works because that might be a bit confusing. Let's introduce the patch which I'm going to use to explain the functionality of the sequencer. The memory sequence itself is at the heart of the patch and the two output rows of the sequencer are connected to two GNOME synth voices over here. The left one for the upper um, output row and the right one for the lower row. The gates are directly connected to the gate output of the two corresponding rows while the pitch CV input are connected through sample and hold uh, modules. I'm nearly always using a sample and hold module between the sequencer and the oscillators to make sure that when I have a rest in the sequence by not sending a gate that the um, pitch is staying constant over that um, step of the sequence. Otherwise you would hear a pitch change without an additional gate which personally I don't find so attractive. The two synth voices then go directly into the mixer. I'm using the CF mixer mixers up here and then through the plateau reverb into the output. Down here I have another synth voice which basically just plays the bass note so clock is coming directly from the BPM clock which also triggers the lower two rows of the sequencer. Now let's have a look at the input section of the sequencer. The input voltage is taken from the output of the 12 key keyboard and I'm combining two of them to get two octave range here while the gate of the 12 key is triggering both the push button to write the note and the forward jack in order to forward the sequence. By pressing a button or a key we see that the sequence is forwarded by one step and the pitch value is stored in the sequence. The combination of the forward and the push input is a bit redundant here. We could also disconnect that and instead use the auto mode 
which automatically writes a value into the sequencer when a trigger arrives at one of the um, transport jacks. Here, however, we use it on manual setting because we will also use the transport section later to pull nodes back from the memory bank. I will use the upper keyboard here to put a node value directly into a specific step here, into the second step in part of the sequence later. We will see the effect. The lower keyboard on the left hand side uh, determines the transposing of the whole sequence we are playing. Finally, I'm using the direct outputs of the first six steps to play a chord using the Gratrix um, six voice oscillator. I'm not going there directly, but I go via the Octa Plus, which is a simple module just adding two voltages and normalizing from the first input down the row so we can use an LFO and apply the LFO voltage to all six um, pitches which will go into the oscillator. Those voices are then combined in the mixer and going through a chorus and a phaser back into the master mixer and finally into the reverb and the audio out. Okay, first I will turn up the volume of the gnome corresponding to the lower row of the sequencer. In the moment the sequence is empty and it just keeps on playing the uh, C4 note. Now I start right in the notes into the sequence, you see the LEDs lighting up corresponding to the step I'm writing. Now it has a full 8 step sequence stored and I write that sequence into the first memory bank. Now we can start again and write a new sequence, in this case a F minor chord and I write this chord now into the second memory bank. Okay, here we go. Now we can just recall the first memory bank and it plays again the C minor chord. The chords were recorded with respect to the bass note, which was the C. Now I can transpose everything to an F. So the stored chords will be played with respect to the bass note F. I can go to the second slot or back to the first memory slot. And now I'm going back to the bass note of C. Let's enter a third sequence, a G minor chord, okay, and that will be stored into the third memory slot. And we can go back to the first. Now I'm increasing the volume of the first gnome, which is played by the middle row of the sequencer, and that plays a five note sequence. It's taking the same note material is just cycling through those notes in a different pattern. As explained earlier, I'm taking the voltages from the first six steps and use them to drive the Gratrix oscillator and now we phase in the chords played by that. Changing the pattern again. the bass is coming in. The bass note is triggered directly by the clock and plays the note, the bass note of the sequence determined by the left hand keyboard. Now I'm increasing the probability of the upper of the two Bernoulli gates in that module and that is used in order to trigger a random step of the upper row of the sequencer but also via the triggered switch is 
triggering one of the pull inputs of the memory bank. What that does is that for the given step it takes over the node which was stored in the corresponding bank. So what it does in this case is that slowly it brings the sequence back to the one corresponding to the memory bank we have selected in the triggered switch. So in this case it would be the C minor chord. So now let's connect the pitch output of the right keyboard to that override jack of the sequencer in the second step. And as we hear, both sequences play on its second step whatever note is selected on that rightmost keyboard. Now let's start playing a little bit with the waveforms of the oscillators to change the sound slowly. The second part of this Bernoulli gate here controls the probabilities for the forward or backward step in the middle sequence. As you can hear now when I transpose the sequence the node values selected for the override are also with respect to the base node. So, in fact, what I'm selecting with the rightmost keyboards are just the intervals to the base node of the whole sequence. The same actually also holds for the CV voltages going into the inject of the sequencer. Also, those are relative to the base node. Now we can also start writing additional notes into the current sequence. As we're still recalling the sequences through the pull jacks and the trigger through the Bernoulli gate, 
the sequence will slowly relax back to the original one. So it's like a temporary uh, disturbance of the sequence. we can change the lower sequence by changing the stride so we are going through the sequence not step by step but we are jumping three steps in every input uh, both Now I'm slowly fading out by simplifying the waveforms of the oscillators, removing the sub bass and also slowly going back to the sine. And I will also now slowly enter more of the simple notes to thin out the sequence more and more. So I hope you enjoyed this introduction and I can only recommend just play around with the sequence and explore by yourself and yes, enjoy the rest of this tune.